She won numerous awards for her performance, including Army Worldwide Best of Show Performance yes. Art while serving in the Army until 1984. Yes. She also won an Urban Berlin Award trophy, recognition, and other awards, too numerous to mention. Her favorite honor was the opportunity to sing with Nat King Cole, the Christmas song with Lou Ross in concert in Korea, uh -huh. December 1983. Uh -huh. He labeled her a performance, performance personality. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but let me say this about Miss Darwin on personal experience. Miss Darwin is a true woman of God. She loves the Lord ever since her childhood, and she grew up in a godly home, always talking about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. She's had visions. She's been an interpreter of dreams, and Miss Luar, Miss Darwin, has even until this day gone out into the mission field and have called people to Christ. She's an exemplary woman, and she's an example to all of us. Without further ado, I ask you to stand as we welcome Miss Dawson to the pulpit. Amen. Amen. That's a whole lot, John. Amen. 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 That's a lot. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Amen. You may be seated, Reverend Bell Jones. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, I'm trying to get this back in order. Um, you were reading the scripture that I didn't, uh, I guess because I didn't call in and get it, did I? That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But um, uh, I think that it all went well because it ties in with some of the things that I want to talk about. Yeah. And uh, I have been... Uh, battling illness these last two or three weeks but God is real Amen. and I can always depend on him since I realized that I don't have to fight my own battles right. I used to fight my own battles because I thought it was me that had to make my life the way I wanted it but all I had to do was say, God, would you do this for me? Amen. And wait and see when he would do it. But that didn't do it. All I had to do was wait and see what he was going to do. Yes, yes. Because there's nothing that you can ask for yourself that's right. that God won't do for you better. Yes. And that's what I'm living with now. Yes. And I'm living with expectation of new deliverance. Yes. He always does this in my life. I've, I've been through three deaths. Mm. So I can tell you yes. that what I'm going through now will be yes. a new deliverance. Because I've dealt with uh, satanic influences. And it all, I know when it's there because they always pounce on me. And I say, oh, I know the devil won't get me. Amen. And so I have to get off to myself, and I'm getting ahead of myself because that's all a part of what I want to talk about. But now, I think I need to open up with a uh, prayer here. Amen. Okay? Let's see. <clears throat> Where is it? Uh Wrong one, don't I? That's all right. That's all right? All right. I sure do praise God for you. <laughs> all right. Now, that was invocation, but someone did it. I'm normally doing it myself. You know, I'll just say this about prayer. Prayer is most important. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's more important to God than speaking to a large congregation. Yeah. Amen. Of any kind of people, uh -huh. I stay to myself and I write prayers daily. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if you, some of you may realize it because I kind of put some of them on uh, the internet. 
Why do I write? I write in order to honor God as he heals me. And with the instructions he places in my soul that I may continue to honor him. I've lived past a coma, past a stroke, thank you, Jesus, since 1984. And since then, I've lived past more. A lot of people in the community says, she must be dead because they hadn't seen me. And when they saw me, I must have looked mighty pretty or something because they must you look so beautiful. I said, well, thank you. And, and I love smiling anyway. And that's what keeps God uh, happy. And I love to be happy in Jesus. And it keeps us young. Yes. Isn't that right, Reverend? Amen. All right. <laughs> okay. And it's difficult for most people to pray after these kind of conditions because, it, uh, as you, most of you might know, when you, when you talk about comas and strokes, you're talking about anything that affects the brain can cause certain problems in your life. And uh, I'll give you what he needs for you to accomplish his will. Mm -hmm. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Believe in who God is with his children. Yes. That's what you need. Amen. Just let not your heart be troubled. Right. Speak through me, dear Lord, this 23rd day of October, 2016, that those who hear your words will be obedient yes. and follow your instructions. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for using the ministry of the ecumenical churches worldwide as an instrument that others may freely live in your will. Yes. Your will is orderly and true. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Would you help me with a song? I, uh, I remember my first time alone with God. Mm -hmm. I was a country girl. I can't wait till the bishop hears this. He says, uh, everybody knows that you're from the country because you talk about it all the time. But my, I had this favorite brook. We had a little farm, our 40 acres. And I would go down to this brook, stick my feet in it, and watch the deer and the little squirrels and watch out for snakes. I believe that day that Daddy saw me. And I went back down there one day. And it was the most beautiful little garden. He had cleaned it up for me. And I began to sing in it. And I remember the first song I sang, and Jesus touched my heart. In the garden, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. There's a joy I hear calling on my ear. The Son of God discloses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own and the joy I hear calling on my ears none other has ever known hallelujah he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush their singing. And the melody 
that he gave to me within my heart is singing yes he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we shared as we tarry there none other has ever known one more verse y'all I stay in the garden with him. Go ahead. I shouldn't have moved these bad eyes. <laughs> I stay in the garden with him. Through the night, though the night around me is falling. But he bid me go through his voice, you know, his voice, his voice was calling, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he Tells me I am his own And the joy we shed As we tarry there None other has ever Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for Thank my you, little Jesus. brook. Thank you, Jesus. And I tell you this, Thank you, Jesus. nobody can tell your testimony the way you can. Yes, 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 yes. You have to be real with God. Yes. He gives you your testimony yes. so that you can bless somebody. Yes. You know, but I don't know. He Maybe he didn't want me to have these uh, new eyes put in, but I, I went on and had it done myself because <laughs> I sure couldn't see him, <laughs> but I just thank him. Now, the first part of, uh, uh, well, we had the scripture. And do this. That's all right. Yeah, because you told them about my, uh, my life, part of my life, and, uh, my life is entertaining, and it's entertaining about history, the history of my people. Right. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about James Weldon Johnson. In the beginning of the 18th century, no one has expound in literature as James Weldon Johnson with the creation and no other expound worldwide so eloquently from the Bible in this day as our bishop, Redfern II. Amen. I've been around the world a few times and as an international traveler, I have yet to know one who can hold the attention of people with words from the mouth of God and Jesus as these two men of God. We need our world today to understand the importance of the scripture. I believe it was the bishop who mentioned about our uh, election coming up and how we must really put our heads and our minds and our hearts and our soul. I know he didn't say all of that, 
but that's what's God given to me right now. We got to put it like Daddy used to say to the grinding stone. Because uh, I don't know what to pray for. Except God, you intercede and do what you do best for your people. Amen. Okay? But I want to do this. Right now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, but this is one of my favorites. I, I, would, I used to write plays, and they would march troops in at uh, the different bases, especially out at Fort Jackson. They worked me out there, boy. And they wanted to, well, my job was to help to bring the races and the ethnic groups together so they could get along during basic training and uh, AIT, the uh, training. And uh, even in Korea, it was the same way. And I'm hoping that this comes up. Oh, it's mighty slow. You know, sometimes that happens. Oh, here it is. Thanks, God. And uh, my first scene one in my play, Heritage of America, was simple, James Weldon Johnson's creation with a dancer, one dancer in the floor in the form of an egg. People understand egg. But I don't know if they understood Genesis when God took dirt and spat on it and molded it and made a man. I don't know. But I believe we do. But there are a lot of people who don't understand that. And the reason you don't understand a lot of things that's in the Bible is because you don't believe it. But we need to start believing. You know? So that part is how James Weldon Johnson recreated it for us who don't understand to understand it. And he said, and God stepped out on space. And he looked around and said, I'm lonely. See, even God got lonely. I'll make me a world. It was void. It was nothing there. And far as the eyes of God could see, darkness covered everything. Blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. And God smiled. And the light broke. Can you see it, y'all? And the darkness rolled up on one side. And the light stood shining on the other. And God said, that's why I smile all the time. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Then God reached out and took the light in his hands. And God rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun. Can you see it? And then he set that sun up blazing in the heavens. And God said, and he set that sun up blazing in the heavens and the light that was left from the sun, God scattered it. Now you know that this is wrong. And I know this. God, God scattered it up in a shining ball and he flung it into the darkness. Oh, he spangled the night with the moon and the, and the stars. And then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world and God said, that's good. Then God himself stepped down 
and the sun was on his right hand and the moon was on his left. The stars then cluttered around, clustered around his head and the earth was under his feet. And God walked around and where he trod, his footsteps hollered the valleys out. So you, now you know we got to go through these valleys. He um, and, the, and bulged the mountains up. So what were they up there for? Because we had to, we got to reach them mountains sometimes when we down in those valleys. Then he stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over to the edge of the world and he spat out the seven seas. <laughs> He batted his eyes and the lightning flashed. He clapped his hands and the thunder rolled. And the waters above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. Then the green grass sprouted and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine trees pointed their fingers to the sky, and the oak spread out his arms. The lake cuddled down in the hollows of the ground, and the rivers ran down to the sea. And God smiled again, and the rainbow appeared, and hurled, curled itself around his shoulders. He wants us to look pretty, too. <laughs> then God raised his hands and he waved his hand over the sea and over the land. And he said, bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowls and birds and beasts swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forest and the woods and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then God walked around. God looked around on all that he had made. He looked at his sun. He looked at his moon. He looked at his little stars. He looked on his world with all its living things. And God said, I'm still lonely. Oh. Yeah. Then God sat down on the side of a hill mm -hmm. where he could think. Yeah. I guess that's where we get this from, thinking, you know? Deep, by, by the deep, wide river, he sat down with his head in his hands. God thought, and that's where my frowns come from, and he thought, till he thought, I'll make me a man. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay. And by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there the great God Almighty who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the most far corners of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand, that great God like a mammy bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust toiling over a lump of clay till he shaped it in his own image. Yes. Then into it he blew the breath of life yeah, yeah. and man became a living soul yeah. amen. Amen. amen amen i guess you want to know how these women got here huh <laughs> well you gotta read your bible <laughs> thank you jesus <laughs> read your bible but we know that god after he realized how he felt and he observed Adam. He knew Adam was made in his image. So what did that do? In God's mind and his thinking, he had to give Adam something, uh, something like himself. So he was a spirit. But Adam, 
he made Adam the way he wanted him to be, and he made him the flesh and bone. And a piece of that bone, after he put Adam to sleep, was removed from Adam, and he took that, and he made a pretty lady like Isabel Jones. He made a pretty lady like Sister Gwen. You see? He made a beautiful woman like me. <laughs> now, ain't God good? Yes, he is. Yes, y'all hear me? I hope you hear me, because we're all God's beautiful children. Yes, and wonderfully made. Thank you, brother. Yes. Now, I had another little something here to go along with that. I tell you, I, I'm getting along with this today. Uh, <laughs> I said, come on. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor. And he writes out all my scriptures. You know he gives me all of my medicine in my room. Okay. That was James Weldon Johnson. Now, I got, a, I got a few more minutes. Okay. I'll end that part. Because that was the Old Testament, yeah. okay? But in the New Testament, he had to deal with death. And uh, he gave us Jesus because there were so many things that occurred. Let me see if I can uh, pick that up. It's in Genesis. Now, Adam had sexual relations with his wife, Eve, Amen. and she became pregnant. Mm -hmm. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later, she gave birth to Cain's brother and named him Abel. Amen. Okay? Now, I'm going back where I was, if I remember. Okay, I think it was right here. Oh, no, that was him at the keeper of the sheep. I got so much stuff in here. Okay, here it is. I'm, I'm, I'm just like a reverend back there. I was fussing at him. I said, you can't see. And the other day on his sermon, he said, I got to get me some glasses. <laughs> I thought that was so beautiful. Now, I, I'm thinking this is it. Now, we're in the uh, New Testament. No? Yeah, we're in the New Testament. It was Luke. What was this uh, this week? Luke uh, 19. 19? 18, all right, I have it. All right, all right. Uh, I want to get down to the part. All right, I'll start at the beginning. I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than, that's 14, verse 14, uh, rather than the other. For everyone that exalted him shall be abased. Now, this is the part I wanted. I had it right. And he, was, um, he, that, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And he, and they brought unto him also an infant that he would touch them. No, also infants. There were more than one infant. It were bringing babies to Jesus. Okay? And he would touch them. But when the disciples saw him touching these babies, they rebuked them. They didn't realize that they didn't have that kind of power. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children 
to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall no wise enter in. So I guess I'm, 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 I'm just saying that because I really didn't give you a title or a subject. But we all know what I'm talking about. And I spoke from the beginning to the end. In the beginning, God made us after he made the world. There was nothing. But look how good he is to us. And uh, earlier I heard them talking about the food. Yeah. He, he has supplied all our needs. Yes, yeah. Like I said on my first sermon, Daddy only had a third grade education, but nobody had to tell him what to do. Who gave Daddy this education to know how to do that? Yeah. I'm still amazed at my father, yeah. but I'm more amazed at me because I'm his daughter. <laughs> now, what I want to say now is that I think I will close and I, I will uh, let uh, Brother, Brother uh, Jones come up and give some final words and then I can uh, pray. Of Bened give you a prayer of benediction. Amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. I've never heard creation described or like that. Oh no. That was very entertaining. Thank Amen. You. Amen. It was almost like watching a movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's right.